Hey everybody, it's Jim here with DVS Direct. And today we've got something really exciting to show you. We've got from NewTek, the NewTek Connect Spark Box. So what this is, it's a way to take HDMI, in this case, or SDI video with this box. They have two versions, one's HDMI, one's SDI. And they will take that video and they will convert it to an NDI stream on your network. As you can see, we have a Cat5 connection. And we also have uh, connectors for antennas because this will work wirelessly. And I'll show that to you in a, in a minute here. We also have uh, a couple of USB connectors on the side and a card connector on the side because you can record on this as well. So you can actually record, ISO record whatever this is seeing onto a USB thumb drive or USB drive or a memory card and take it later to do anything you like with it. So let's take a look at how easy this is to start. And this was very easy to get going. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing we need to do once we have the Spark connected to our network is install the uh, HX drivers for the system. So inside your box, and I should show this to you here real quick, uh, inside the box there is a little card with a URL on it that you go to and it will let you uh, download the uh, HX driver. and. Uh, you also find the documentation, the PDF file that, for the documentation for the Spark, as well as the most current firmware. And when we get into the Spark here in a minute, I'm going to show you where you would upgrade the firmware. So let's take a look at this. So like I said, the first thing we need to do is download that file and install it. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to re-download it. So let's just go ahead and install it. So it's right here, the NDI HX driver, and we'll just run the installer. And it's just like any other installer that installs something on your computer. Now I did find out when I went to use this on the TriCaster that you also have to install this driver on your TriCaster before it'll be recognizing the NDI HX sources. Um, I'm not sure if that's all TriCasters, but on mine, I, I had to do that. So, so now once we've loaded the uh, HX driver, it also loads a couple of tools, which I've actually got the portable version, which you can put on a thumb drive and take anywhere. Uh, so what it is, is called NewTek NDI Studio Monitor. Uh, this is the updated version of the NDI monitor that was originally available with the toolkit. Uh, you definitely want to use this version because it does work with the uh, HX format sources. So there is our Spark. And uh, what you would do is you would just uh, go over here and you can see all your different NDI sources being listed for the monitor to view. There we go. So now we've got our Spark uh, on our network. So once we've got the Spark on the network, we can actually, uh, and this is a new feature in the NDI monitor, which I'm going to find really easy to use. And what it does is if you have a NDI source like the NDI Spark or the NDI PTZ camera, which we're going to be talking about in another video, and they have a web server built into them and you want to get to that, you don't need to know the IP address. You just go to this corner down here, and as you can see, there's a little star icon or something like that, and you just click on it. And that takes you into the Spark user interface. So, uh, there you can, again, it shows our video. And like I said, you can actually record video, ISO record video from the source feeding the Spark right on the Spark. And you would just do that by clicking record. So now it's recording on the Spark. So this is nice because you could actually uh, you 
could actually use uh, the Spark to do ISO recording if your camera, like we're using a camera that doesn't really have any, uh, any way to record or an older camera that maybe it's a DV or HTV camera uh, and you want to uh, you know, record the video to an, a card format. You know, my, my, Sony HF, um, my Sony FX7 camera is got an HDMI port on it, but it does not have a card slot. It's a, an old DV tape-based camcorder. So that would be perfect for, for the, uh, the Spark. So I'll go ahead and stop recording. And you can uh, select different, uh, different uh, levels of, of video bandwidth. I have it set to high because it looks better. And as you recall, we have both a uh, analog input option and a digital input option on the front of the Spark. You see the little eighth inch audio jack that you can connect the audio mixer to. And uh, just by clicking over here, you would now be recording audio levels, or sorry, analog audio versus digital audio. So uh, over here, if we go to the second tab, we get basically the administration page. And in the administration page, we can actually customize the name of the Spark and the channel name. It tells you what version hardware we're running, what version firmware we're running. And like I said, on that uh, web page that the uh, HX software was downloaded from is also a place to download updated firmware. So you might want to be checking that from time to time. Uh, out of just out of routine, I always update the firmware. In fact, I did update this firmware. It was very easy to do. You just download the file, it's a bin file, and then find it in the, uh, click on the update uh, firmware, and just it'll pretty much just an automated process. So, um, record options. Uh, basically, you can, since the thumb drives are generally uh, formatted in FAT32, it has a four gigabyte size limit on files. So what this will do is it'll record uh, files in blocks or four gigabyte blocks so that you won't lose anything. Um, the next setting down, and I, I, I'm just starting to play with this. So I'm not sure what all this stuff is gonna do, but uh, there we go. We can select a disk to record to that sort of thing. I only have one thumb drive connected to the Spark right now, so I wouldn't have any option for another one. But then right below that, we have our network parameters. And by default, it's set to dynamic DHCP. And like I said, when I got this in, all I did was I connected the box to my router using the Cat5 connection, because I hadn't configured the wireless connection yet and ran the uh, driver software to configure the uh, HX uh, drivers on the computer and plugged it in and it came right up. I didn't have to mess with anything else and uh, that, that was really, really nice to see. That's, I think that's New Tech's goal is to make this pretty much easy as it can be. So anyhow, as we scroll down here, we can get to the uh, uh, Wi-Fi section. And I've already got this configured on the Wi-Fi, which uh, we're actually viewing the Spark on the Wi-Fi. So, uh, so my DVS Direct 5, it's my 5 gig or my 5 gig uh, or 5G connection. And uh, you should always use a 5G connection if one's available. But you can see it's listing all of the hot spots the Spark can see in, in and around my office. So. You just select the one you want to use, and then you got to put in the the, you know, the password, whatever you configure the password to, to protect your, your Wi-Fi network, and uh, it's it's ready to go. Uh, multicast. Uh, multicast is a new feature in HX. Uh, what it does is let you t uh, it'll let you send video. In other words, you can pull video to multiple receivers from one transmitter. Instead of having to generate streams for every receiver, it doesn't have to do that anymore, and that's gonna save you a lot of bandwidth. So, uh, there are some things you need to set up in your switch, and you need a managed switch, I believe, as, as I recall, to, uh, to enable that to make it work correctly. But uh, that's another way you're gonna save bandwidth and time on your network, so. And uh, that's pretty much it in the, uh, let's see what the question mark says. Oh, this is gonna take me to the New Tech website. Okay.
Okay. And then the question mark, what's it telling me? Oh, it just takes me, oh, that's the, this is the page where you would download uh, the driver and the firmware and, uh, um, and so you can get to it right from the server, or right, right from the web server on the Spark. So, but you do have the card that comes in the box that gives you the URL that you go to. Uh, so you, and you'll need that the first time to get, the, uh, to get this all working. So. so that's pretty much all you have to do to configure it. So let's jump over to our TriCaster output. Actually, we're looking at the TriCaster output, but let's look at the video coming into the TriCaster. So first I'm going to look at this signal, which is the actual SDI video coming out of my Sony uh, NX5 camera, which I'm connected to the Spark. And then on input number three, we have the actual, I'm sorry, input number four is the actual NDI signal from the Spark. So I just transitioned between those. And if you watch the little tally lights, the little red and green lights, as I switch between preview and program, the Spark gives you a tally indicator. So I can go back and forth between it. And this is running wirelessly. Right now I do not have the Cat5 connection connected to the Spark. I'm actually doing this over the network, over the wireless network. So we're going to be doing some more experimentation with some really good uh, ubiquity uh, uh, wireless access points that are really fast. And so the idea is we want to be able to run multiple cameras wirelessly. And that opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. Um, so anyhow, so that's a quick preview of the Spark. And we're really excited to have finally got them here to play with and figure out what we're going to be able to do with them. And uh, it's exciting, this, this whole NDI workflow, IP video workflow is really exciting because it's going to solve a lot of problems and it's ultimately going to make your life easier. So I'd like to thank you for, for uh, spending a little bit of time with me today taking a look at this. Uh, we are a new tech reseller and we would appreciate if you decide you want to get the Spark or the PTC camera that you give us a call. Uh, my number here is 1-800. 379-7267 and you can also email me at sales at dvsdirect.com or you can go to our website at dvsdirect.com so thank you again for stopping by and taking the time to view my video and uh, if you have any questions feel free to use the email or give us a phone call and I'll be more than happy to try to answer them for you so again this is Jim Davis with DVS Direct and I'll see you next time.